Majestic, majestic in beauty and in glory, Father God. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. No one like you. Let's lift up our voices and worship God. We turn our eyes onto you, Jesus. And everything else is lost. Everything else fades away, Father God, in the presence of your light, your face, oh Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your presence today, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. No one like you, Jesus. Everything else fades away as we turn our eyes onto you, Jesus. Everything else is lost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We welcome your presence in this place today. We set affections, our hearts unto you, Jesus. For no one else, nothing else can do but you, Jesus. i 
your presence, we are under. Here in your presence, heaven and earth become one. Here in your presence, all things are of joy ever revealed suddenly wiped away here in your presence all of my gains now fade away every crown no longer on display Your presence, heaven is trembling in all of your wonders. The kings and the kingdoms are standing amazed. Here in your presence.
your presence all things are new in your presence everything bows before Hallelujah. Father, we honor you this morning. Glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. You are much less in every way. And this morning, Father Lord, we lift up our hands before you. We lift up our voices before you because there is none like you. And Lord, we honor you and we adore you as we present ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. And Father Lord, we know that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And we know that in your presence, Father Lord, we are undone. Lord, you are working our work in our lives today. And therefore, Lord, as we stand before you today, we are forever grateful that, Lord, not only are you doing something for us, but you're also doing something in us. And so, Lord, we ask you to work a work in us today that our, the thoughts of our minds are pure. That the deeds of our works, Lord Jehovah, they are pure. That, Lord, all things that we do bring glory and praise to you. And therefore, Lord, we honor and praise you this morning. We adore you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Oh, Father Lord, we praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glorify your name, O oh Lord, this morning. Glorify your name this morning through our praises. Glorify your name, O oh Lord, through our praises as we worship and praise your holy name. Lord, you show yourself strong on our behalf. We bless you, Lord, and we honor you. Hallelujah. Glory be to your holy name. Let's just lift up our voices and just worship the Lord. We bless and praise you, Father. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all adoration. And Lord, we bring our praise to you. 
Oh, Father, we bring our praise to you. This is our sacrifice that we bring to you today. Lord, we lay ourselves before you. We present ourselves before you. And Lord, we thank you that your eyes are running to and fro. Lord, seeking those whose hearts are loyal towards you. May your eyes find us loyal in our worship towards you this day. May your eyes find us loyal for the Lord in praising you. May your eyes find us loyal, Lord, to give glory to you. And Lord, we proclaim that there is no other God but you. Oh, glorious Lord, glorious Lord, glorious Lord. Father, we surrender all unto you this morning. We surrender all unto you, Father, in exchange of your thoughts, in exchange of your plan, in exchange of your love, in exchange of your power in our hearts. Lord, we surrender all that we have in exchange of you. And we ask you, Lord, to fill us to overflowing with your spirit, to enlighten the eyes of our understanding by your spirit and by your word. This morning, Lord, we exchange our thoughts, we exchange our deeds, we exchange our desires with your desires. And we thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost that is inside of us, strengthening us, unveiling to us, showing us and guiding us into the path of righteousness. Lord, we declare and we decree that there is no other God like you. Oh, we bless and praise you, King of glory. Oh, we have an advantage this morning, Lord. We have an advantage this morning to worship you. For you declare that it is to our advantage that you had to go back to the Father. And therefore we have an advantage of, this, of the Holy Spirit this morning. He's our counselor. He's our comforter. He's our strength. He's our standby. We have the advantage to know. We have the advantage to be led. We have the advantage to be guided. We have the advantage this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we praise and we bless your holy name. For we do not lack of counsel. We do not lack of guidance. We do not lack of teaching this morning. We have the guide. We have the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, Lord. We lack no place for, for, for the things that you have given to us. And therefore, Lord, we ask that you help us be in tune to the Holy Ghost and be in tune to your spirit. We bless your holy name. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Rebo sheke te la 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 ba zake pe bebo sheke ra la la ba sa ha. Rebo shiki te la 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 ba zoko pe ra ra ba shande ra ra ba ha. E roba sheke te la 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 ba za ha ha. Oh, Father Lord, I thank you for the advantage that we have this morning. We are having an advantage. You have advantages by the Spirit of the living God. And therefore, Lord, we lean on the Holy Ghost this morning. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit this morning. And Lord, we thank you that you are speaking mysteries in unknown tongues as the Holy Spirit gives us utterances. It is to our advantage. It is to our benefit, Lord. And Lord, we receive that benefit this morning. For you are daily loading us with benefit. We receive the benefit of receiving the Holy Ghost. We receive the benefit of fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost. We receive the benefit of speaking in unknown tongues. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rebo sheke te la 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 ba sa te he. Rebo sheke la la ba sa ha. You are glorious Lord. Rebo sheke te ha. You are beautiful Lord. Rebo sheke te la 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 ba sa ha. You are a mighty God. Jonda la la ba. You are merciful God. Jonda la la ba sa ke te rebo sheke la 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 ba ha. O zote me bo sheke la 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 ba sa ha. Me sheke te la la ba za te bo sheke re 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 bo sa ha. We bless your holy name. We exalt your holy name. We decree that there is no other God like you. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And your joy is our strength. And we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. This day, Lord, you are strengthening us for the life that you have called us unto. This day, Lord, you are strengthening us to live the life that you have called us unto. And Lord, we receive that strength. We receive that joy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Shetir Alaba Zakehe. Manama seke te re re bo sha ha re bo sheke te la 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 ba za ha re bo shika ta da ba bo ze he ra bo sheke te la 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 ba zo ho ra bo kita ba bo sheke re 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 bo za ha oh praise to your holy name praise to your holy name praise to your holy name for you are faithful and you are just oh lord we honor you this morning lord we bless and praise your holy name this morning oh lord jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are much less in every way. Much less in every way. Much less in every way. 
much less in every way, Lord. We thank you and we bless your holy name. We praise and glorify your holy name. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, you are beautiful and we exalt your holy name this morning. Hallelujah, glorious Lord. Glorious Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we sing praises to your name this morning. We sing praises to your name this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. For your name is great and is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We sing praises to your name this morning. Praises to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Praises to the healer. Oh, for your name is great and is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Glorious Lord. You are bringing us to that place, Lord Jehovah, where we see all things are possible in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are raising us up to a height where we are living the life of God, the life of impossibilities, the life where all things are possible, the life for the Lord Jehovah where there are no limitations. But Lord, we are soaring up with wings like the eagles. We are walking in faith. And Lord Jehovah, we thank you that you are walking in faith living by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus as those that have been justified by faith. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, we bless and praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank you for your presence in this place that, Lord, all things are possible to them that you believe. And, Lord, we believe in the name of Jesus. And we call upon the name of Jesus. And we decree the name of Jesus. And we declare the name of Jesus. That is the name by which we, the righteous, run into it. And we are safe and we are secure. It is a strong tower unto us. The name that's above all names. It is the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ alone is Lord. And therefore, we praise your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of Jesus, hallelujah, has, has become a strong tower to us. And Lord, we believe in that name. We speak that name. We trust that name. We call upon the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we call upon your name, Lord, you are healing our land. You are healing our bodies. You are uniting our communities. Men and women are coming together in the same spirit of faith. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and purpose to seek your face and call upon your name, Lord, you will heal our bodies. You will heal our land. You will strengthen us, Lord. Jehovah to be able to walk the life you have called us unto and this day we call upon the name that's above all names that are the mention of the name of Jesus Christ every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord Lord, you fill us with your spirit. You fill us to overflowing with your spirit. Let it rise from within us, the flow of the rivers of the living waters. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord Jehovah, arise within us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Power to minister the word. Power to speak the word of God. Power to live the life of God. Power to decree that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. It is to our advantage, Father. We receive that advantage. We take advantage of that advantage. We walk in that advantage. We speak in that advantage. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, and so, Lord, we surrender to you this morning. That, Lord, you work in us. That we become a holy habitation where you dwell. And that, Lord Jehovah, there is nothing that hinders the, the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that, Father Lord, as we present ourselves to you, you are helping renew our minds through your word by the Spirit of the living God. And that, Father Lord, you are purifying us, Lord. 
and making us pure, the vessels of honor that you can walk through. Lord, we thank you that this day you are working a work in our lives. This day, Lord, you are purifying us. This day, you are making us whole. We are becoming vessels, Lord Jehovah, that are fit and ready of use by you, O oh Father. We thank you as we surrender to you. We surrender to you, Lord. All of us, Lord, all of us that you fill us to overflowing with your spirit. Fill us to overflowing with your presence. Let your word be a reality in our lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. For your word is alive and powerful. Your word is alive and powerful. Lord, let your life be in us through your word. Let your power be in us through your word. And Lord, you've declared to us that your word is able to expose the intentions of our hearts. May you reveal to us the intentions of our hearts. May you expose them that, Lord, the, the things that are hidden in our hearts are the things that bring praise to you. The things that are hidden in our hearts are the things that will keep us from sinning. The things that are hidden in our hearts are the things that will cause us, Lord, to walk in light that you have enlightened us with. That, Lord, we do not hide, hide anything in our hearts, but your word exposes it. Your word reveals it. Your word brings the intentions of the thoughts of our hearts into a place of the light where the light of God is shining. Oh, Father, we bless your holy name. We praise and glorify your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise your holy name. Be glorified this morning. Be glorified this morning. Be glorified this morning. We bless and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jumbre bukasha katari de boze, jaya tate te de de bozo kabaha, meski de veshe la la bazo kubaha, ribozo kubabo shrese haha. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, praise to your name, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I'd like to encourage you, whether you're online or you're in the house, we need to have more of this taking place in our hearts. We do have a plan, but God's plan supersedes our plan. You know, when the purpose supersedes pleasure, we can go far with God. Where the purpose of God supersedes my pleasure. The cause of God supersedes my comfort. So my goal day by day is to strive to get out of comfort. I want to get out of comfort. I don't want to be comfortable with my life. I want to live for the cause of God. And when the cause supersedes comfort, the power of God begins to be evident. Why? If you're still comfortable and you're still pressurable, God can't empower you. Because if he empowers you, then that power will go into your pleasure and will go into your comfort. And God will never give you power for pleasure and comfort. He will give you power for purpose and for a cause. So every time we come into his presence, I am undone. Work in me. I want to be that clay that has been set on the wheel of a porter. Work in my heart. Let your word expose every intention of my heart. Reveal every secret thing that is hidden in my heart that is hindering me from coming to the place where you have called me. 
I want to get out of pleasure and get into your purpose. I want to get out of comfort and get into your, pop, uh, into your course. And when you get into your course and you get into your purpose, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. Amen. And I believe that God is doing that in us and through us. And when we get into that place, I can guarantee you, things will begin to be turned upside down. Look at what the disciples did. They, led, they lived for a purpose and they lived for a cause. And people knew everywhere they went, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here. Why? They were not living for pleasure and they were not living for comfort. That's why Paul could be stoned and left for death. He gets up. He does not say that where is the closest hospital? He says, let's go back to the city and preach again. Why? I have a purpose and I have a cause. I want to feel comfortable, but I don't have time for comfort. I don't have time for pleasure. I have time for a purpose and I have time for a cause. And as a result of that, God empowered him. And him who was left to dead the following day, within 24 hours, preaching like nothing has ever happened to him, which means he was healed instantly when he connected with the purpose. Glory be to God. Amen. So I pray that we get out of our place of reasoning. Get out of reasoning. Reason will keep you comfortable. And get into a place of discernment. There's a difference between discernment and reasoning. When you discern, you get to a place where God is. That's why the Bible says spiritual things are discerned. They're not reason. You cannot reason spiritual things. You discern them. When you get to a place of reasoning with spiritual things, you have come to a place of pleasure and comfort. Should I pray? I don't know. I don't feel like it today. You've gotten into reason. You've gotten into comfort and pleasure. You should never ever reason whether you should pray or not. Jesus said men ought to pray always and never give up, which means always all the time. Men ought to lift up holy hands and pray everywhere all times. Prayer is a communication with my Father. And it is in that fellowship that the strength comes in. I draw my strength from my life union with him. The moment I begin to reason whether I need to be in life union with him, I've left the source of my power and I've gone into a place of comfort and place of pleasure and I've left the power flowing. Glory be to God. Yeah. Yes. Only, oh, only five of the 13 children showed up at the club. And they were silly and goofy. And, but we were we came doing the best we could. We came prepared. We came. And uh, we came, it's like God just kind of told me, that we came to bring our crackers and our fish. We, we were our crackers and our fish. We came prepared with the best we knew how to do in all that situation. But I could see God working for that hour and a half. I could see him drawing children just supernaturally to people that they hadn't been drawn to before. And, and he gave one of one of us an, the idea that an idea that Paul knew him down. And I could see the word. I know I don't feel new, but somehow I and I can't tell you chapter and verse, but in the Bible somewhere it says the gospel has the power built into it to draw people toward it. And I could see that operate with the kids as they heard the word and they knew that they were that they left them. I could see it. I could actually see it going in. And two of the goofy little boys and another, a third one who'd already prayed for salvation but was never given it. Those three wanted to go back and ask Jesus to be their Savior. In that, what started out looking like a real mess, but we were doing our best and the Holy Spirit came and poured out his anointing in us. And he did a wonderful work in those little children's lives. And I just give him all the glory. Amen. Amen. You have to stay with the cause. Yeah. Stay with the cause. So never be moved by what you see. You change what you see because of what you believe. And therefore, you always must be developed and ready for that. Amen. 
And so thank you so much for ministering to those children, giving yourself for them. God honors that because that is the next generation we have to develop. You're leaving your comfort. You're leaving your pleasure. Yeah, because it's in the evening. I need to sit down and relax. But you take your time. And God honors that. God sees that. That's why the Bible says God is not unjust. For he sees your labor of love. And so because he sees your labor of love, he, he, he responds to you and he gives that to you. And so I'd like to encourage you. Do that. Reach out to those children. Minister to them. And God will be able to work in your life. Amen. Uh, I believe this morning you are already blessed. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I've come to realize that of late, even though I have something to share with you, I'm much more prone to listen to what the Holy is telling me more than what I prepared. Because what the Holy Spirit is sharing with me is much more important with more of what you want to do. And so I'd like to pray today that uh, God will work something great in our lives. But in the process of doing that, I'd like to share something with you just briefly to help you be able to gain some, gr some ground. This morning while I was in my prayer, praying, uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me that, did you think... I just gave you a word to make you have something to look up to for this year. And I knew exactly what he meant because he said, you're entering into a season of extraordinary living. See, a lot of people look for those words just to look like I have something that has been given to me. But God says, do you think I just gave you something to make you look good or sound good? And so I began to think about it like it is quick for you to answer, but always remember whenever God asks you a question, he really doesn't need your answer. He wants you to think of what he has given to you because he already knows the answer, but he wants to, do you know what you really have? When he asked Adam, where are you? He was not really asking for Adam to tell him where he was. He already knew because the Bible says that God knows everything. You can't hide anywhere. David says, I cannot run from your presence. I can go into hell. You'll see me right there. I can go everywhere. You are going to see me. So you can't hide from God. So when God asks you a question, it's not like he's looking for an answer, but he wants to know if you're really thinking of whatever he's asking you. So I began to think about it and say, you know, I've never really given it a thought of the word. I've just taken it for whatever it is that is extraordinary living. But I've never given it a thought and say, okay, isn't this great we've been given a word? I've never given that thought. So just I, think, I just started telling him, like, you know, I've never really given it much thought. I've just taken it for what you've given it to me. Then he says, let me show you something. And so I want to walk you through my prayer this morning. Let me show you something. And so I say, okay. So if you, have your prayer, if you have your Bibles, walk with me as I walk with you, right? So this is my conversation with him. And so while I was, while I was with him this morning, trying to find that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I think I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Actually, before, before we go there, let me take you to first, no, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12. We are going to come to First Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 18. And so here I am, I'm praying and thanking God for the life that I have and Him working in my life and Him calling me and 
guiding me and showing me the path to walk. And I know I've not totally understood it, but I'm willing to walk with him. And so, so when I gave you the word that you're entering into a season of extraordinary living, you understand that it's a life that is beyond what is normal. You understand that is a word that is above the regular things. So when I told you to do that, I raised up a standard for you, for you to be able to come to. So this is a word that heaven released out so you can respond to heaven and match yourself up with heaven. If you're not getting it, we'll get it in a little bit. So he said, when you're entering into a season of extraordinary living, it is simply heaven showing to you that Christ is calling you to attain to his life. And when you heed to that call, then you match yourself up to that life, and now you can dispense that life on earth. You're not dispensing it now, but I've raised up that standard for you to dispense it on earth. So then now you need to understand what is happening. Now, number one, he says you have to receive every word of mine like you've never heard it before. Now I'm thinking, walking you through my prayer this morning. You have to accept my word and receive my word like you've never received it before. Why is that? Because you will never grow if you don't receive it like you've never received it before. Because growth comes in repetition. He said, okay, growth comes in repetition. He said, yeah. Don't you know in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, when Paul was saying, I planted and Apollo watered, but I gave the increase. I bring growth not on the seed, I bring growth on the watering. In other words, the seed can be good. If it is not watered, there is no growth. So we are still on the context, extraordinary living, all right? I'm walking you through my prayers. He's talking to me this morning. So you're just getting it as fresh, just from a few hours ago. So this is my thought process going through. So I gave you this word. I gave you this word. And the word that I gave you is to bring you up to a standard. I've raised up your standard. So as far as I'm concerned, I have already raised up your standard. Now you have to take it like you've never had it before, which means extraordinary living. You cannot say that, yeah, the pastor told us you're in the past. That was the time the seed was sown. Now you have to water it like you've never had it before. And God says, I bring increase in the watering. I don't bring increase in the seed. The seed is sown, but the increase comes from it being watered. Right? Some things I won't share with you. I'll share with you that part to help you know. So then now he brings me to Hebrews chapter 4. And he says, look at the first words until where there is a comma. For the word of God is living and powerful. Just pretend that there's a period right over there. And just put a period over there. For the word of God is living and powerful. Now, you've never heard this word before. You've heard it for the first time. The word is living. It's alive. Anytime you hear the word of God, life is coming in you. If you have heard it before, you are not allowing life to flow in you. So now you're not living the life of God because I've heard it before instead of I'm hearing it now. So the word of God is living. You told us about extraordinary living. You are in the past. You are not in the present. The word is, not was. I am hearing, I am living the extraordinary life. 
Life is coming in me right now because the word of God is living. So there is life coming in me every moment I'm hearing that. If I go into the past, I have cut off the life from me. When I receive it, there is life flowing in me. And it is not only life, there is power in that word. So there is life that is being produced in that word that you're hearing in the present. And that is what is causing increase in your life. That is what is raising you up to this measure that God has set for you. So in other words, you choose to come up to the measure by the degree of you hearing continuously the word. You stop hearing that word, you've cut off the life and the power that will propel you to come to that measure. And so the word of God is living and it is powerful. And then skip and go to the end part. Assume that it was period, and then we come and, so the word of God is living and powerful, which means that word, whenever God gives you a word, there is life in it, and there is power in it. If you want to live to the level of that word, you have to continue watering it yourself. In other words, meditating it and speaking it. The moment you get into reason, you have gone into pleasure and comfort and let the cause and the purpose for that word. When that word came, life came to you. When that word came, power came to you. The moment you stop attending to that word and reason in that word, you have left your life and you have left your power. Are we okay? Are we getting something? Is this helping you out? So now there is life and there is power coming to me. I don't care even if the word was spoken to you 15 years ago. It is still active. You just need to activate it. So in other words, quit reasoning and get into cause and purpose. For this cause, the word of God came to me that I might live. For this cause, the word came to me that I may live the extraordinary living. For this purpose, the word of God came, that I may arise beyond normal. For this cause, the purpose of God came to me, that I may not stay where I am, but come where he has prepared me for. This is my cause. So I'm going to do everything that I need to do to stay there. Now you've got to understand that anytime anything is released, there are receptors and there are resistors. Anytime anything is released, there's going to be reception and there's going to be resistance. You want to eliminate yourself from being resistant and include yourself to being a receptor. Because if you resist it, you have, released, you have resisted the cause and the purpose for your life. And you've gone into comfort and pleasure. And you'll never attain to the stature that you have been called into. So you're told the end part of it is, and the word is... A discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Which means now the word of God that has come to you that is alive, it begins to discern the intentions of your heart. It begins to expose the things that are hindering you from coming to that stature. That's why you need to keep on watering it. I am living the extraordinary life. I am experiencing the extraordinary life. The more you water that, God begins to bring an increase and in saying, how come you're not praying the way you ought to pray? What is happening? That word is beginning to reveal, expose the intentions of your heart. Something that is hindering you, keeping you in your comfort. And you say, well, I believe then I'm going to begin to pray more. What's happening? The life of that word and the power of that word will strengthen you to come to that stature. You've left your comfort. Now you become alive in prayer towards your destination. Now you become powerful towards your destination. Why? Because the word is exposing something that is hindering you. When you get into reasoning and saying, wait a minute, I really don't have time to do this. Yeah, you've just stepped out of your course and gone to your comfort. You just stepped out of your purpose and you've gone into your pleasure. But the word is alive and powerful. And therefore, what you've got to do is you've got to 
strengthen yourself to get there. And God has given you every tool to do that. And so when he mentioned that, I began to think about it and say, yeah, I can see where I can be hindered from getting where I need to go, even though I have the life with me. Because there is something that is hindering me to get where I need to get. Then he showed me something. And that's where I was going sh- to take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 18. And let's read from verses 17. And Paul is saying, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see you face with great desire. So Paul was saying we were with you, but we have been momentarily or temporarily taken away from your presence, but not in heart. Which means even though we are not there with you physically, we are still there united with you. Which means the very cause that we came together with, we are still united in one. All right? So Paul is saying, I may not be with you physically, but I'm with you purposefully and with the same cause. We are together. All right? Verses 18, this way I want you to see this. He says, therefore, what is in there for it? We wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Did God call you to them? Yes. Are you having the same purpose with them? Yes. Are you having the same course with them? Yes. Why not? Because temporarily, Satan has hindered us. Temporarily, say, for a while, for a short time, we've been separated. At heart, we are together, but Satan has hindered us. Even I, Paul, want to come, but I've been hindered by Satan. Which means now you've got to understand that the word that has been given to you, there is an extra force that is working against you from fulfilling that. Do you understand that the word is a spirit? Jesus said that the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. The words which I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profits nothing. It is a spirit that gives life. Which means when God released his word, his his word became a spirit giving life to you. But at the same time, you've got to understand that when this word has been released, there is something that is happening in a spiritual arena to hinder you from coming to that stature. Paul is saying over here, Satan hindered us. Spiritual being hindered us. Even though we knew we had it, we are hindered. Now, could it be today we are hindered from attaining to what God has given to us by Satan and we don't know about it? Now, God wants us to be aware of that. So you've got to understand that now you have somebody who is going to hinder you in the very plan and purpose of God. Why do you think you get worn out? Why do you think you get weary? Why do you think you want to give up? Why do you think you leave and then come back? You leave and come back. Satan is hindering you. Why? Because if you keep, if you keep on watering, guess what will happen? God has said, Paul planted, Apollos waters, who gave the increase? So God is giving increase on what? On the watering. Otherwise, we will have said, Paul watered, I gave the increase. No, Paul planted, I gave the increase. Paul sowed it. Apollo's water. In other words, Apollo's kept on with what Paul said, and I gave increase on what Apollo was standing with. Which means if Apollo's was hindered by Satan, God could not bring increase. So the seed has been sown, but you need to water it. So every time you get in and you get out, you're not watering. That's why you're coming short. Which means God expects commitment on your part. You've got to understand every time you want to give up, every time you take a step back, you are actually walking away from watering that seed 
And God is saying, you're denying me the opportunity to bring increase on what I've already given. It is not that the word is not working. The word is working. The word is alive and the word is powerful. But your lack of watering is causing no increase. So now you begin to change your thinking and say, wait a minute. No more quitting for me. I don't care what I face. I don't care how I see it and I don't care how I feel. Because the moment I get into feelings, I've gone into comfort. The moment I go into thinking, I've gone into comfort and pleasure. And I've left the cause and the purpose and there is no watering and there is no increase. You will have a form of godliness but no power. But my word is alive and powerful. Paul is saying Satan hindered me. Now, if you want to understand this better, go read the book of Job. Where was the assignment of Job's life being discussed at? In a spiritual realm. Do you think you're different? The assignments of your life are being discussed in the spiritual realm. You are happy that you've received extraordinary living word? That's great. Let's begin. We are going to make sure somebody dies whom you really love. We are going to make sure that this happens, which is very dear to you. We are going to make sure that this is what is going to happen. And what happens? You back off and then you say, oh, I can't believe this. So much things are happening to me. Oh, this is going to happen. And that and that happened. What has happened? You've gone into a dormancy stage. You've left the cause. You have left the purpose. You've gone into comfort and you've gone into pleasure. And Satan is like, yeah, there's no way increase is going to come over there because God is a God of justice. He says when you water it, he's going to bring the increase. You've not been watering, so you stay in your comfort and you stay in your pleasure and you're never going to see any of this. You can go and pray as much as you want, but as long as you pull out into your comfort and pull out into your pleasure, I know he's a just God will never bring increase in your life. So you wonder why you've been going to church all along and you're not seeing any increase. Praise the Lord. So I'm sharing with you my, my discussion this morning. All right? It's my discussion with God this morning. He's showing me some stuff. You need to take notes and keep this because he says, once my word has left my mouth, it must fulfill that which I please, which God saw to it today. It pleased him for us to understand this. So your number one enemy is not your neighbor. Your number one enemy is not your family member. Your number one enemy is not whom you think is that. God says, I expect you to water the seed. Because I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. If you want to eat, you better sow so that you can have enough to, for it to be bread. All right? <clears throat> there is much more that I can give out of that because when I'm giving to you, something else is coming to me. And so, how do you maintain Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Have you ever had a back and forth life? See, you know, we have to get out of this. How can I put it? Spiritual perfection. We've all been spiritual perfect. But we have to move out of spiritual perfection. Whereby I sound right, I look right. Even though I know things are not right. I have to sound right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God can never fix what is not accepted. In other words, when you don't come to reality with yourself, God can't help you because you're self-deceived. Can I share with you something he shared with me this morning? Are you sure you're not going to go like, what? <laughs> he, has to he had to correct me this morning. You've always heard me say, and I've, I've just told you a few minutes ago, never, ever, 
give up, right? I already started seeing your eyes going like this, and I've not even said whatever I'm going to say. Never, ever give up, right? Never, ever give up. Never, ever give up. He told me this morning, if you don't give up, I don't, give, I don't step in. If you don't give up, I don't step in. So you have to give up on yourself and let me carry you. As long as it's me, I have to do, I have to, uh, you're not giving up. And God is like, I can't help you because you're not giving up. So I've given you a word. You need to give up on yourself and let me step in and build you up. But as long as you're not going to give up, I won't step in and help you through. So here we are, we are praying, believing God, calling for fire, calling for strength and everything, but you're still holding everything. God, move. God, move. Help me out. You know, we have to, your word says this. God says, okay, give up. No, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. God says, I can't step in either. Oh, no, you say you will. Only under some certain circumstances, you have to give up. You have to let go and trust in me. Did Paul say that that which, I, he says, I know him whom I believe. And that which you have committed to me, I will keep. Did, I, did he commit to you that he'll take care of you? Then give taking care of yourself. Did God commit to you that he'll take care of you? Then give taking care of yourself. Give up taking care of yourself. You say, God, that is the case. Teach me. What do I need to do? Don't go and sit there. I know what to do. This is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to do it. And God, you're going to bless me in this. You say, no, I didn't ask you to tell me what you're going to do and ask me to bless it. I ask you to trust in me so that I can bless you. So you're still holding on to your list. This is how I'm going to do it. I've planned it all, and this is how it's going to be. God said that, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. Oh, no, no, but this is what makes sense. I know, but I don't make sense because we walk by faith, not by sense. Sense you've gone yourself into the reasoning mode. You've left the course and the purpose, and you've gone into pleasure and comfort. Because as long as you have that plan in list, I'm so comfortable in this. So much comfortable, right? I like comfort. Don't get me out of my comfort zone. Otherwise, some emotions are going to come up and some words are going to come out. And God says, I want it to come out. Because that is the reason why the word is exposing the intentions of your heart. You are insecure and so you want something to use as your security. I want to be your security. So let the hidden things come out. That's why you have to say, I'm scared. God says, I know you are scared, but I want to help you not to be scared. It is okay. You think God is going to fall off the chair and say, oh my goodness, what did you just say? <laughs> why did he say, let the weak say I'm strong? God said, God, I'm weak. Say, great, you've given up. Now let me step in with my strength and strengthen you. You want to go like, no, I'm strong, I'm strong. I want to do that, I'm strong, I'm strong. I want to do that, I'm strong, I'm strong. Yeah, you, how long have you been saying you're strong and you're not strong? You have to be realistic yourself. God, I'm weak. I give up. Saul had to give up. As long as he knew he had his plan to bring people to death. Who proclaimed that Jesus is Lord? God couldn't do anything with him until he had to give up and say, okay, now what do you want me to do? Say, great. Now that you've given up, let me step in. Now go to the city and you'll be told what to do. Man, people never told me what to do. I tell people what to do. In fact, I'm on my way to Damascus telling people what to do. Now I have to be told what to do. Say, yeah, you're in a learning mode. I brought you into a learning mode. You've always been a teacher thinking you know, yet you don't know anything. So Paul had to 
So then they say, okay, that is it. See, I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Paul was getting out of his comfort zone. I'm comfortable telling people what to do. Now I have to be told what to do. I'm uncomfortable with that. Because when it comes to education, I'm educated. I have reasoned with top leaders and teachers. I am it. When it comes to education, man, I am it. That is so. Now, I have to listen to somebody whom I don't even know what their degree is. I don't even know what manner of man they are. I just have to listen to somebody to tell me whoever it is. And I'm uncomfortable with that because I want to know who are you, which school did you go to, what did you achieve, and what do you do? Because you're not my level. See how we go into reasoning mode? And so we've left the extraordinary life over there. God gave us the extraordinary living. I'm going to experience the extraordinary living. And all these things are taking place in your life and you're missing it all. And you had another word. I'm waiting for 2023. What is next? You've not even lived 2022. And you're ready to go to 2023 because you're comfortable. God is saying, get out of your comfort. Get out of your comfort. Get out of your comfort. And so, Paul is saying, Satan hindered me. So, you've got to understand, do you have power? Isn't Paul the one who says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might? So that you may do what? Withstand the wiles of the enemy. May stand evil days. For we have been given authority over satanic powers. Didn't Paul tell us that? And now he's saying, Satan hindered me. When, when, when were you blinded? See, that gives you great comfort. And if Paul can miss it, I can miss it too. That's why I'm not spiritually perfect. And I'm not looking for spiritual perfection. If I miss it, I've missed it. Because God is teaching me. Otherwise, you'll set yourself in a position. And that position you've set yourself in, you're not going to let it go. Because God is not interested in position. God is interested in what? Responsibilities. Some people think that God is interested in position. He created position, but it is responsibility that puts you into position. So, while I was talking, it was showing me that. And so, he mentioned that what Job was experiencing on earth was as a result of what discussion was taking place in the spiritual. But thanks be to God, we are not like Job. Because we've been raised up together with Christ. And we've been made to sit where? Heavenly places in the realm of the Spirit. Which means you and I know what's taking place in the realm of the Spirit. How? Jesus said, the Spirit will show you things to come. The Spirit will put you into remembrance of the things that I've said to you. The Holy Spirit is quickening you in your understanding. When you want to give up, the Bible says that the Spirit of God will quicken your moral body. So now I'm not like Job. I am much aware of the spiritual arena. And therefore I get into discernment and not into reason. In other words, this word came with life, this word came with power, and I have to attain to that level because now I discern spiritual things. I don't reason spiritual things. Now, do you think God is unjust to ask you to expect to live extraordinary? You, know, you have to think critically. Don't be quick to answer. Just think critically. Will it be possible... For God to ask you, there's no need of you quarreling with your kids. You can live a life with no quarreling with your kids. Will God be unjust? But you're comfortable in doing that. And if you're asked to live a life like that, you're going to, how am I going to do that? God says, great, because I want you to give that up so that I can show you how. But as long as you're going to say, no, they irritate me, yeah, you're holding on that irritation. 
Say, I know they irritate you, but are you willing to give the irritation up? Say, yes. Okay, now begin to listen to me. But understand, Satan also wants to make sure you stay in irritation. That's why you have to discern these things. It's not flesh and blood. Spiritual. So when God says that, he has simply upgraded you. You're like in an economy in a plane. He has said, come to first class. Now you remember when you just get out of that seat, you're going to get your bag. Someone says, sit down. The flight attendant may tell you, you need to sit down. No, no, I've been upgraded to first class. No, no, you need to sit down. You're being hindered from what is yours. So what do you do? I build up my spiritual antenna. But before I go there, let me share something else with you. So when God asks you to do that, is he unjust? Which means you now have to decide whether you want to live the extraordinary life. Right? Can you live a life of prayer that is beyond normal prayer? And I'll tell you, the normal prayer, all of you can tell me a normal prayer. Me, myself, and I. Bless me, protect me, heal me, guide me. After me, help them. Right? Right? That's, that's a normal prayer. Right. Wake up in the morning, thank you, Lord, I have eyes to see. I have breath in my lungs. Thank you for blessing me today. Everything that I do, make me a blessing. And then sometimes you don't go to the people. Until they irritate you, bless them. That's the normal prayer, right? Can you go beyond that where you wake up in the morning and you're so much in tune with the Holy Ghost, you find yourself praying for the president even before you begin to ask anything for yourself. That's beyond normal. Right? And so when God says extraordinary living, you have to be able to upgrade yourself there. Can you live an extraordinary life in your finances? That's another, that's another area we're going to argue about. I know how much comes in. God says, I know how much is coming in. But can you come to a place whereby you can live beyond what is coming in? In other words, God says, I'll open every avenue for you. Oh, how am I going to see that you're comfortable in what you see? But the things you see is subject to change. Because when I call you for extraordinary, there could be a dog that is coming with a bag, brown bag in its mouth. And that bag has got money. There could be somebody who walks and yes, he's like, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I just sense that I need to give you this. That is beyond normal. You could get a phone call from the state and saying, you know what, we've reviewed something and we realize that we've been holding something from you and therefore we're going to do this. That is beyond normal. God said, do you know I can do that? There are so many ways you don't understand, but you have to be able to listen to me. But unless you're willing to, you won't. And so when he says that God is not unjust, then it is possible, right? So then what do I need to do? Philippians chapter 3. So I'm just sharing with you my prayer conversation, right? I'm going to share with you all of it, just a little bit of it. All right? So you know when I go into prayer, you know how my mind is working with God. We talk back and forth. It is not God. I'm here today, you know. Hebrews says this. James says that. And the book of Psalms says that. I'm believing that today in Jesus' name. Amen. And I see how I walk with him. I listen to whatever he's telling me. And then I ask a question. A scripture comes up and I open it. What does that mean? Stop right there. I stop right there. For the word of God is alive and powerful. Stop right there. Is there life in my word? Oh, yes. So whenever my word comes to you, there is life in it. So in other words, you'll never come short of the life of God if you'll continue to water that word that came to you. When you heard by his stripes you were healed, that was a seed. There is life in that word to cause healing to take effect in your body. If you continue to water that word, 
like you've never heard it before, God says, I'm bringing an increase. Because if you listen to it as I have heard it, you will not water it because it is something you heard, but you've not been watering it. God says, I bring increase in what is watered, not what was sown. Didn't Paul say, I labor for Christ to be formed in you again? Which means Christ had already been birthed in you, but now I'm laboring. Why am I laboring? So that this formation can come to completion. If I do not labor into it, means if I don't put myself into praying for you and watering that for you, and you will never be able to have the formation of Christ in you. So you have to have these discussions with God when you are praying. And talk with God. It could be a 15 minutes that you've had all this conversation. And to me, it was a 30 minutes conversation this morning. And I'm not telling you everything. I'm not telling you, I'm just telling you a little bit of what happened. So how, how, how do you stay with that? Philippians chapter 3. Because I have to ask, now how do I do this? I know Satan can hinder me. I know there is life in it and I can miss that life. But Satan can hinder me. But thanks be to God, I am not blinded to the spiritual world. I'm alive to the spiritual world. Because Jesus Christ has brought me to the level where he is. Seated together with him spiritually. My position with him. You have Philippians chapter 3, verses 14. See what it says. <coughs> what does it say? Philippians chapter 3, verses 14. What does it say? Who? Who? Who is I? Who is you? Who is I? Because Paul is saying I. So who of I is Paul talking about? Yes, yeah, spirit. Because the word of God is spirit and has brought life into your spirit. And it is the spirit that gives life to the Flesh, which means it is the spirit that gets the body out of comfort. So Paul says, I press, my spirit is putting pressure on the comfort. My spirit is putting pressure on the pleasure. So that I can be in the coast and in the purpose. So I do this. I allow my spirit to drive me, not my flesh. That's why I have to press. Press means there is simply going to be opposition. Have you ever given up on something you say you're never going to give up on? You allowed the flesh to come up. So I did not press. The flesh did. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But if you feed the flesh, whatever you water is what will increase. You water the flesh, increase comes from the flesh. You water the spirit, increase comes from the spirit. So Paul says, I press. Because the more I press on the spiritual side, guess what? I am increasing on the spiritual side. So I press. In other words, I put pressure towards Towards what? Towards the what? What did he say? We all look for the prize, right? Who is, who is usually awarded a prize? So if you don't win, you don't get the prize. So if you don't press, you don't get the prize. So you could be looking for the prize and you'll never get it if you don't press. So what should be your focus on that verse? The goal. Because without the goal, you can't press. What are you pressing towards? What are you pressing towards? You're just going to press towards anything? I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm pressing. Yeah, you could be busy, but where are you going to? I'm busy everywhere, but I'm not going anywhere. But I have a goal, which means if you press towards the goal, you have the goal as your mark. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yeah. 
Are you ready for this? If you have a goal, you actually have set a boundary or restricted yourself on your freedom. If you have a goal, you have actually restricted yourself on your freedom. I restrict myself on the things I can do because I have a goal. If I don't have a goal, my freedom is not restricted. I can say that, I can do that, I can go there. I have a goal that I'm pressing towards. Yeah, I'm, I'm restricted, I'm restricted. You limit yourself from coming to that level because God has already released it to you. Now you have to come to that level. You have to water it. That's why you need to keep on pressing. And when you press, there is power in that word. That's why it says, my word is life, is alive and is powerful. Which means not only is it bringing life to you, but it's also empowering you to come to that stature, the measure that I've set for you. The goal is the standard of God. So when he's given you the goal or the mark, that is a standard he has set for you. And he says, because I've set the standard for you, there is life in that standard and there is power in that standard. Now you have to press. Yeah, you go back into pleasure and you go back into comfort. And that's why you don't get the prize. The prize is only given to the winner. And Paul again said, I run in such a way that I'm not disqualified. That running in such a way is I'm restricting my freedom. I know I should be eating cheeseburgers and fries, but because I have a race, I'm not going to eat cheeseburger and fries. I'm restricting my freedom. I'm restricting what I can do. Yes, I am free to eat cheeseburgers and fries. I'm free to drink all kinds of sodas that I want to drink. But if I'm going to attain to that price, I have to look at my goal. My goal requires me to do this, and I'm putting pressure through my spirit. There is life that is coming towards me when I do that, and the power of God is strengthening me to do that. I want to feel, I want to give up. I want to give up. When you have a goal, I was in sports. When you smell some of those good, some of those food, you're like, hmm, smells so good. But I'm restricting my freedom. Because I know there's a price that is coming to whoever is pressing towards the goal. And now that goal is not the upward call. The upward call. It is not. The upward call. He said, I press towards the mark for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The goal is not the upward call. The goal brings you to the call. Do you get that? The goal brings you to the call. The goal is not the upward call. The goal brings you to the call. In other words, you are running a marathon race, right? And when you're running the marathon race, the marathon race is not the ultimum, uh, ultimatum goal. But it brings you to a level that you need to be at. Right? That's why at least say, I need to be in shape if I'm going to do that. So the marathon is not ma making you in shape. It's bringing you to be in shape. So the goal is helping you be in shape. It's not the shape. You say you want to lift 25 pounds today. I'm out of shape. So what do you want to do? You begin to get yourself in shape. Because the 25 pounds is not the shape, but it is making you be in shape. So the goal is helping you come to the call of God. The goal is not the call. Extraordinary living is not the call. But it's going to help you come to the call of God so you can be able to live that life of God. Amen? That's enough for you for today. I think your mind is being given so much now that I need to stop. <laughs> if I don't stop, you're going to have too much. And you'll start spitting it back at me like a baby. When you feed them, they eat, and then they go <laughs> back at you. <laughs> go act the others. Then you come back next week, you're going to feel the rest.
go act page one, page two, and then you come back with field page three. <laughs> Did you get something out of this? Did this help you out? So you now see what happens when you go into prayer and how to act out your prayer. But there's still a lot I can share with you. But this is this is something that took 30 minutes with me just with God. I get in there and begin to talk, and he talks, and I stop, and I listen. I have my list. Absolutely, I have my list. But right now, my list is not anything important. His list is more important. I leave my place. I get into his place. So when you sing, in your presence, heaven and earth become one, right? So now I don't feel like, God, we are one. Heaven and earth now are one. I'm here on earth. You are in heaven, but you and I have connected, so now we are one. There's nothing that is impossible. So now you are exposing to me, revealing to me, showing to me. Now I can do all things. That which seems impossible is possible. Amen? Let me close that. Let us pray. Glory be to God. This is how we make a difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of the people. I can give you another scenario that I was, I went in to pray for somebody. And he ended up talking to me. And by the time he finished talking with me, it is so easy just to go to the person and talk with them instead of praying for them. There are things you deal with in life sometimes. You don't know what to do. You pray, and it's okay to pray. And pray to God, but be open to listen to God. What is God saying? And while he's talking to you, he'll begin to share with you some stuff that will change your life. And then you go to the individual, and he just talks to the individual, and everything is set. Why? Because once he gives you the seed, you begin to water that seed, and he causes the increase to come. Increase comes in life and in power, in life and in power. Now you have the life of God to share that, and you have the power to share it. And nothing can stop the power of God, and nothing can stop the life of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's get up on our feet and just thank Him. Father, we are forever grateful for helping us, Lord, to come to that st stature, that standard that you have set for us. Lord, you want us to be able to be good examples on earth representing the heavenlies. That, Lord, we experience all of you, and, Lord, we dispense it to all those that are around us. And, Lord, this morning you've just revealed to us through your word how it is for us to be able to walk with you. And now, Lord, we thank you that we are aware that there's adversaries. We are aware that there are limitations. We are aware that there are hindrances. We are aware that there are obstacles. But, Father, we know that greater is he that is with us than he that is in the world. And for the Lord, we are not afraid to face obstacles. We are not afraid to, to face opposition. We are not afraid to face challenges because we know that whoever is in us is far much greater. There is power in the word that you've given to us that nothing can limit that power. It is exceeding greatness of your power that you exercise when you raise up Christ from the dead. Even death could not resist the power that raised up Christ from the dead. And because we believe so, that power is at work in us and that, Lord, as we commune with you, Lord, nothing will be impossible to us. And therefore, we are not afraid to face any circumstance. We are not afraid to face any challenge. We are not afraid to face any opposition that is coming our way because we know him whom we believe. So, Father, Lord, I praise you and I honor you. This morning, I take this opportunity, Lord, to pray for all families. I'm forever grateful that, Lord, it is your desire we walk in love, we dwell in love. And for the Lord, we know that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Lord, I pray for every family represented in this building, every family that is watching online, and those who will be watching later. Lord, I pray over them in the name of Jesus. 
And just like you've released life in your word, and there is power in your word, I release your word in every family in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that wherever any one of them might have been blinded by Satan in the minds of their understanding, your word goes forth like light, and it enlightens the eyes of their understanding, and darkness has to flee and can never overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. And because light has come, Lord, they are, they'll arise and they'll shine because your glory has risen upon them. And Father, they overcome every obstacle. They overcome every little thing that is trying to limit them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, I declare that, Lord, there is no more chains of, of, of arrogance. There is no more chains of pride. There is no more chains of wickedness. There is no more chains of arguments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those little foxes that are spoiling the, the, the divine, Lord, we take authority over that right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we put a demand in our spirit that we will walk in love. We put a demand in our spirit that we will walk in the word. We put a demand in our spirit that the life that is in the word of God to walk in love will overcome and we will never fail acting on the word of God. Circumstances have to change. Opportunities have to change, but the word of God has to endure. We will see the word of God enlightening us in our families. We will see the word of God strengthening us in our families. We will see the word of God raising us up in our families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we destroy every chains of argument. We destroy every chains of rage and anger and murmuring. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everything that keeps us comfortable, we take authority over that in Jesus' name and we challenge to the word of God and we declare that the word of God supersedes every comfort. The word of God supersedes every pleasure in the name of Jesus Christ. And that word has come to give life to us in our families and it has come to empower us in our families in the name of Jesus Christ. And where we have been stolen from, where we have been destroyed and where we have been killed because of ignorance, and because of comfort and because of pleasure, Lord, we repent of that. And now, Lord, we put on the belt of truth. We declare that your, true, your word is true and your word sets us free. And therefore now, Lord, as we repent, we declare that, Lord, we will not go back to comfort. We will not go back to pleasure. We will not go back to complaints. We will not go back to murmuring. Lord, we raise up an altar of worship. We raise up an altar of praise. We raise up an altar of honor to you. And Lord, you said whoever honors you, you will honor. Therefore, I declare our families are honoring you. The way we live, the way we speak, and the way we act. No more argument. No more strife. No more arguments. No more strife. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, Satan, get your hands off our families in Jesus' name. Every test, every trial, every temptation you've sent our way, we overcome that. We overcome every test. We overcome every temptation. We overcome every trial in the name of Jesus. We are made complete and whole in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I call our children to the light of God. I call, I call our dads to the light of God. I call our moms to the light of God. I call our families to the light of God. Be enlightened in the eyes of your understanding in Jesus' name. Light be in Jesus' name. Oh, Father Lord, we drive out blindness with the word of God. We are not blinded anymore. We have been enlightened in the word of God. We walk in the light. We are light walkers in Jesus' name. We are light livers in Jesus' name. We live as the children of light. We walk as the children of light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father Lord, I present every family before you. I thank you for the life that is in every family. Lord, I declare that our families will serve the Lord. Just like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We are representatives of our families. Lord, whether they've gone afar, whether they've gone to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south, Lord, I declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for us and our families, we will serve the Lord. They can never be far away not to hear your word. We call them from the distance to come forth in Jesus' name. We call them unto repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. We call them to the light in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever has wandered away, Lord, we call them back in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, they come back to their senses. 
They hear the voice of their spirit. They respond to it because the spirit of the living God is ministering to them. Lord, send laborers to go bring them out of that dungeon. Send laborers to go bring them out of that darkness in the name of Jesus. Set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the anointing of God destroy every yoke of death. Destroy every yoke of depression. Destroy every yoke of confusion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The chains are falling. No more confusion. No more depression. No more oppression. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we contend for the truth that we have received. We contend for the truth that we've received. And the truth sets us free. And therefore now we thank you for our families. We thank you for our husbands. We thank you for our wives. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our relatives. Lord, we are grateful. We are bringing them in. All our nieces, even the father's nieces and cousins, Lord, we bring them in. Not just a few, but much in Jesus' name. Oh, Satan, you're not going to hinder us in Jesus' name. We refuse not to labor anymore. We refuse not to labor anymore. We labor in prayer. We labor in word. And God, you're not unjust to see the labor of our love. We thank you that, Lord, they are coming back in the name of Jesus, lifting up their voices unto the Lord God Almighty, enlightening the eyes of their understanding. It is okay, Lord, as they come in. It is okay as they come in in the name of Jesus. It is okay as they come in, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We receive them from afar. We receive them from near. We receive them from all around in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. I take authority over every suicidal spirit in the name of Jesus in families. You will not torment us. You will not torture us in the name of Jesus Christ. I take authority over every suicidal spirit in Jesus' name. I destroy your powers. I destroy your work. I destroy your plan. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. The spirit of death shall not rule and reign in our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Suicide, you have to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We take authority over every spirit of perversion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our families are not in perversion, but they are in the light of God. We rebuke you, spirits of perversion, in Jesus' name. We demand you have to go in Jesus' name. We apply the blood of Jesus. We are born of the blood of Jesus. We are washed by the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over our lives, over our families in Jesus' name. And the blood of Jesus speaks better things on our behalf. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And we testify that we are born and washed of the blood of Jesus. We have life through the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We receive our families, Lord. 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 We are grateful for the Lord that you have united us back. You have brought us together. Thank you for destroying the powers of darkness. Thank you for leading them into the light. Thank you for bringing us together again. Thank you for causing us to speak together in love. Thank you for uniting us together, Lord. Thank you for binding us together. Thank you for sharing your love abroad in our hearts. As we sit down together as families, we discuss together, we walk together, we talk together as families. We are forever grateful in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Glory be to God. We are not competing with one another, but Lord, we are completing one another. We are forever grateful. We have our place as a family. We dwell together as a family. We pray together as a family. We talk together as a family. And Father, we will live like Nehemiah. We'll be building our families with a sword in our hands. <coughs> We are aware that Satan can hinder us, but we lift up the word of God and we'll continue to build up our relationships. We'll continue to build up our families, that which can destroy, that which can hinder, that which can steal from us, that which can kill from us. Lord, we raise up the standard of your word. For when the standard of the word is lifted up and raised up, no powers of darkness can prevail against us in Jesus' name. 
Your word is alive. Your word is powerful. It searches and exposes the intentions of our heart. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. We can declare that the Lord is our portion in this land of the living. And our God is our refuge. And our fortress, our very present help in time of need. We are grateful for our families. Hallelujah. Satan, you are a liar. And we overcome you by the blood. On the basis of the blood, we receive our family members. On the basis of the blood, we receive our family members. For that blood can flow to the lowest valley. That blood can go to the highest mountain. That blood can go to the darkest place. That blood can go and bring them to the farthest place. It does not matter, Lord, where they may have been bound. The blood of Jesus sets them free from the powers of darkness. The blood of Jesus sets our, our, our families free in the name of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, we have freedom. Through the blood of Jesus, we have access to them. In the name of Jesus, we receive our children. We receive our family members. We receive our spouses. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Some of you will be getting phone calls here pretty soon in these next few days. They are coming from afar. They are coming close. They are coming in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, God is at work in them both to do and to will for his own good pleasure. God is bringing them into the place that he has prepared for them. God is bringing them back to their place of reasoning where they can sense within their hearts and be able to say, I will go, I will go, I will get up and I will go. I will get up and I will go. So we get up out of these graves. So we get up out of these graves. So we get out of these graves. So we get up out of these graves. We get up out of these graves graves in the name of Jesus Christ. And we begin to live the life of God. We begin to experience the life of God. We begin to be partakers of the life of God. Families are being strengthened. Families are being reunited. Families are being restored. Families are being built up in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we thank you for the spouses and the children and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. From afar, they are coming together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank you for the families of Jubilee Church. Lord, we are bringing them back in from afar. Every confusion, every fear, everything that might have blinded their eyes, we break those chains in Jesus' name. We take authority over every spiritual wickedness. We take authority over every denial. We take authority over every disruption. In the name of Jesus Christ, our family of jubilees coming together in Jesus' name. From afar, in Jesus' name. From near, in Jesus' name. Free from fear, we break the chains of fear. We take the authority over every form of fear and condemnation in Jesus' name. Father, we welcome them and we receive them. We rejoice over them. Oh, Father, we thank you. We fellowship together. Oh, the family of Jubilee Church worships together. Fellowship together. Praise together. Commune together in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We break those chains of, 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 of condemnation. We break those chains of guilt. We break those chains of, of perversion. We break those chains of blindness. In the name of Jesus, we speak light to their mind. We speak life to their heart. In Jesus' name. Courage and comfort to them in Jesus' name. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you for healing us. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for building us. We thank you for the Lord for encouraging us in Jesus' name. Oh, we bless and praise your holy name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Satan has lied to us through murmuring. Satan has lied to us through complaints. Satan has lied to us. Lord, we step out of those in Jesus' name. Those temptations, we break free from them in Jesus' name. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you. It doesn't matter what they have done. Your mercy is greater. It doesn't matter what they've gone through. Your mercy is greater. And Lord, they can see your mercy and they can receive your mercy. And they respond to your mercy. And that Lord, you cause them to rise up. You cause them to be strong and to be bold. And Father Lord, we thank you. 
as you minister to them, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Your blood has taken care of it. Lord, cause the sting of that condemnation to be moved out of their lives. Let the power of the blood take away the sting. That, Lord, they will never be stung again with what they may have done, what they may have said. Because, Lord, you have healed them through the power of the blood of Jesus. We bless and praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful, glorious. Much less in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Much less in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Much less in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Much less in every way, 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 wonderful. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence for your instruction and for your correction father we receive that out of your love for us because you love us lord you correct us because you love us you instruct us and lord we receive that and so lord we thank you that the things that you have shown us lord we will hold dearly and run with them so i pray over everybody today that, Lord, we will never be the same. And we thank you that you'll continue to minister to us and speak to us. Hallelujah. 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 Now, to some of you, you will be tempted to look at the people in your family who've walked away and go back and begin to memorize what they have said or done. Wipe that away. Accept them as they are. Let the word of God work in them. God gave you an opportunity. You are not able to change them. God says, because you've given up, now let me step in and let me make them. So you stay away from it and just thank God for them. Amen. If you get in it, you're going to mess up with God's increase. Glory be to God. Amen. Glad you came this morning, aren't you? Yeah, so praise the Lord. Demonstrate that and continue living for him. Amen. Wonderful, beautiful.